So let's take a look at a simple but functional application of partial homomorphic encryption in um, a field of healthcare. Now in this particular uh, scenario, you are basically participating in a healthcare research study and uh, that study requires you to send them your glucose and cholesterol levels. And they will perform some computation, research computation on their end, and they will give you the results back. Now, you like to participate, but uh, you have some concerns regarding privacy. So the first concern is that, that you really don't want it to reveal this uh, glucose and cholesterol uh, levels of yours because it's a private health information and you don't necessarily want it to send it to the research institute. And uh, you basically want a high level of assurance that the research institute will not able to extrapolate any information uh, from the data you provide. So basically you wanted to make sure that uh, in case of a data uh, breach or the data leakage uh, to third party sources, your privacy still uh, remain largely intact. So that's the whole idea uh, of higher privacy. So this is a canonical example uh, where uh, homomorphic encryption makes sense. Uh, I will be using a partial homomorphic encryption. And um, so uh, that is basically uh, the case here. And uh, I will go ahead and talk about the high level flow and then we're gonna look into the uh, some of the technical side of it. So let's take a look at the high level flow of this application and um, just to give you some context, uh, you can see right now a uh, form that is used uh, to provide uh, the data entry. Uh, so basically you will provide your glucose and the cholesterol level uh, in the form of plain text, which is fine because this form is running on the client side, um, in this particular case running on my dev box. Uh, but um, what happens is that the uh, client will take these numbers and then it will encrypt these numbers, um, so 22 and 32, using homomorphic encryption. And then those encrypted values, ciphertext, will send to the server. Server will take those ciphertext out, does not actually decrypt it, it's still encrypted. Um, and then it will perform some computation on these encrypted data. The computation piece is uh, something that uh, in this particular scenario is very simple. I'm basically multiplying the um, the encrypted data values to a random uh, integer. So that's the form of computation. Uh, again, uh, very simple, but I think for the purpose of this sample, I think it's fine, but it can be advanced. It can be something more complicated if you want to do that. Um, but the point here is this, that uh, the server will perform this computation and it will send the results back, again encrypted, to the client. So it never actually decrypted, so basically never have uh, access to the actual value. So your privacy remains largely intact. Now, uh, when the client receive this, um, the, the results, uh, it will decrypt it on the client side and then results will be shown on the display. So in this particular case, 110 and 160. Now, from a very high level, from a security standpoint, uh, the premise of the homomorphic encryption is that you're basically achieving today without homomorphic encryption, data privacy at rest. So basically you can encrypt the data and put it on the disk. You can already do that without homomorphic encryption you can get the the privacy of your data when the data is in motion because you can use, for example, a TLS encryption. So basically your data is on the wire is encrypted. But what you do with the homomorphic encryption is you can achieve the, uh, the data privacy when the data is in memory. So that's sort of like the third piece that is really hard to achieve without homomorphic encryption. So that's the area where um, the homomorphic encryption comes into the picture from a security standpoint. All right, so with that, let's take a look at the actual application and go through some of the technical aspects. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the technical pieces that compose this application. So broadly speaking, you have the client side and you have the server side. Now for the development and testing, uh, you can run 
the entire piece on a single laptop or a VM and that's perfectly fine. That's essentially what I'm gonna do now. And um, to get it started, you already seen a little bit of a UI and the UI basically is composed of HTML and jQuery and backed by Python Flask API. So it's um, it's pretty simple and it's really nimble. I mean, there's not much uh, code behind the scene for the UI. Um, and I will show you momentarily uh, what it is. So basically the idea here is that the client application UI will take these values, uh, which are basically the cholesterol and the glucose levels and send them to what is a client API. So the client API is basically a RESTful endpoint that take the JSON input. Um, so the client UI actually send these numbers and basically these numbers uh, at this point in time are not encrypted because again, nothing goes out of the client side yet. So the client API will actually take those numbers and then perform the homomorphic encryption. Using um, a library, I'm using a third party library from N1 Analytics and it actually provide partial homomorphic encryption capabilities uh, and the library is written in Python. Uh, so there's a link right there. You can basically go ahead and read their documentation. Very simple to use and they're based on Python. So the entire stack that I'm using right now, the technology stack is based on Python. So it's a very good fit. I do need to call out here. There are other libraries like Microsoft Seal that you can use and I'm probably going to do another demo. I just wanted to just do a single demo and combine partial and the fully homomorphic encryption, but uh, there's another very good candidate. So hopefully I will cover that later. But in this scenario, we're using the uh, Python Pilia library from N1 Analytics. And uh, basically after the encryption is done, we'll create a post request with the encrypted or the cipher text in a JSON format. And then we'll send it to what we call a server. So server also expose an API. Both the client and the server are written in uh, Python uh, with Flask API. And they basically, the server will take the JSON as input and perform multiplication with a random integer number. And the integer number itself going to be a plain text because it's on the server side. Uh, it's not coming from the client, but the client will send the, the JSON file with the input, which is in the encrypted form. So basically again, using the, the Python library from NV Analytics to do this operation uh, on the encrypted data, and then it will send it back to the client again. Uh, and then basically after that client will take that decrypt it and show it uh, on the on the ui all right now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual setup and how i'm running this easiest way in my opinion to run this is using docker it will give you a cross-platform compatibility and it just saves a lot of time so basically everything is already packaged using in the docker file so you just need to clone this repo and then run the Docker Compose. So basically, and then after that, if you wanted to run it on a orchestrator like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or Service Fabric, you, you can do that later on. But the point here is that from a from an infrastructure standpoint, the only thing needed on machine is, is Docker. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and run the, the Docker Compose. So let me clear it up. So I already, clone the repo. So I will do docker compose up and then it will go ahead and run these three components. So as I just described, so we have the client UI right over here, listing on port 7000. This is the UI piece. Uh, then we have the client API that the client UI talks to. And this is basically port 5000 and then the server. Now, if you don't necessarily want to interact with the client UI, you want to do it through the command line or postman, I will show you how to do that. You don't really have to use UI. It's just a convenient way to, to interact with, um, with the server. Let's go back and open up the browser here. So this is the, uh, this is the page here. So I will put the values here and then click here. And this will actually send the data to the client and then from client API to the server and we can see that. So there's a call goes to the client and then to the server and then back to the client. So that's sort of like, you know, the whole loop there. Now, again, because I'm using the random uh, digit on the server side, every time I run this, it will give me a different results. 
as you can see that. Now, if you wanted to run this, this example without using this UI or the browser, let's take a look at how we can do that. I actually written down here a couple of ways to test this out. The first one is actually the curl. So let's just copy this command here. And I have a sample input file. Um, basically, when you are providing these values in the UI to the browser, it's basically sending the same JSON to the to the client API. So you can do that yourself and skip the entire client UI piece. So using curl here, um, you can send it to the server and then you get the results here. So in this case, we are getting 90 and 99. And again, I will run it a couple of times here. So you will see that every time when I'm running it, the results are there. So that's one way of doing that. And finally, if you really like Postman, you can do that. So this is the Postman, pretty much the same situation here. So you have the, the client API endpoint, you have the JSON, and if you run this, again, we'll run it multiple times and you will see that and get the different results. So let's take a quick look into the source code and how the code is structured and how it's uh, how it's using different libraries here. All right, so let's look at the application source code over here and um, how it functions. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code for this walkthrough. It's, um, it's a free tool. You can download it for um, all major platforms, uh, but you can actually use any other text editor of your choice. So to give you an idea here, we start with the client UI here. In the client UI, we have the home.html. This is the UI form. And uh, basically it has like a two input field here for the glucose and the cholesterol levels. And we're using jQuery to take the values out, um, do some parsing and take make this input into JSON, parse it into JSON format, and then send it to the client. API endpoint. There's actually not much other than that. It's a very simple front end. Uh, the client piece is more involved. So let's take a look at what's happening on the client side. So on the client side, basically the first thing client will do, it will take the uh, the values out, the input uh, values out of the uh, JSON. So we have the numbers and then it will perform the encryption because at this point, everything is in plain text. The way the encryption is working is um, First of all, we need to have the public and the private key pair, and this is going to be generated using that NVEN analytics uh, failure library. Uh, so we do that, and then we it's, it's sort of like a classical encryption in that sense, like asymmetric encryption. So you use the public key here to perform the encryption, and then once the encryption is done, we will um, simply pack the values into uh, the JSON format. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole function of the encrypt here. So once the encryption is done, request is sent to the server to perform some computation on it. So we'll take the JSON values and we send it to the server. Um, now, how do we send it and where to send it? Basically, I'm using the request um, in API uh, in Python to perform a simple post. And then what I did is to identify the server. I have a, I have a value defined in the DNS field in the in the incoming JSON from the UI. Now again, there are many ways to do it. This is just a convenient way of doing it and the DNS point to the server API endpoint. So at this point, server will do the computation. We'll look at it in a moment here. Keep in mind that the server never decrypts the data. So the, the values we're gonna receive are in JSON, but they are encrypted. So we get the data out. And then after that, we need to decrypt that. So how do we decrypt it? Well, are we actually going to first get the values out and then we need to transform them into the plain text by using the private key. So in that sense, again, is a asymmetric encryption in this case that we're using the private key to decrypt uh, the actual contents. And once we have the uh, actual values in plain text, package it into a JSON and send it back to the UI. So UI, the jQuery will read those from the JSON and display it. So this is sort of like a high level uh, flow here. Now, if you look at the server here, the server actually takes the similar approach. It will basically going to get the JSON from the client uh, API, and then it will read it out. And again, this is the encrypted data here in the JSON format. Then it will perform the multiplication operation over here. So how it does that? Well, it basically defined this integer here. So between range of one to 10, and then it will perform the multiplication operation over here. 
So this is the multiply operation. Now, this is where the homomorphic, uh, partial homomorphic encryption algorithm comes into the picture because you're actually taking a plain text and multiplying it with a cipher text. Uh, so this is again, the magic happens in that, you know, and when analytics library, which I believe you're interested in the partial homomorphic encryption, you should look at their documentation. But anyways, from a practical standpoint, we basically going to simply multiply these values and send the results back to the, uh, to the client in this case. Now we basically dump it into, into a JSON again and send it back to the, uh, to the client. So that's a sort of like a high level overview of the source code and how it works. I think majority of the heavy lifting is done by the PLR library. So from a homomorphic encryption standpoint, other than that is basically all Python and little bit jQuery. Now from a packaging standpoint, I did provide uh, the Docker file. Now keep in mind that you need Docker file for th all three components here if you want it to be consistent and you want it to just basically install nothing on your laptop. So this is the, uh, the Docker Compose file I'm using. So we have uh, the uh, the client UI running on port 7000, you can change that. Uh, you have the client API running on 5000, again, you can change that and then the server and again port is configurable here. Now. One thing to keep in mind that I'll highlight is uh, when I package the server and the client, if I look at the Docker file, you will notice that I'm actually also installing the N1 Analytics Python PLA library because they do not have a container image right now available in Docker Hub, so I have to do that. And you, if you notice that it requires some libraries to be installed. So there is a little bit going on here in terms of dependencies. And that's the reason why when I did it without the Docker, it's uh, considerably more work, especially doing it in a consistent fashion on different machines. So this container image will actually have Python and other dependencies, for example, the Flask and all that. Um, and very similar to the client, by the way, if you look at the client here, it has pretty much the same set of dependencies. This was a high level overview of the source code. I hope that is helpful.